Hey there, everybody. This is Kenny with another edition of The Yak with Mac. I'm so glad you are able to join us today. This is a place, leaders, this is a place. This is a place where we want to encourage and inspire you to be phenomenal leaders so you can go back and influence all of the people that are working with you. And so we will definitely get to part two of emotional intelligence. Going to break down the other three really key qualities that the Harvard Business Review and the Kenny Business Review feels that you should have to have a a very high emotional intelligence. And so first, let's start off with some reminders. Are you taking 10 minutes a day at least, 10 minutes a day at least, leaders? Hopefully you're taking more than that, but at least 10 minutes a day to develop yourself so that you can become a phenomenal leader. Are you listening to podcasts, reading an article, reading a book? I read this book, uh, I reread it this past week. It's called The Tipping Point. Phenomenal, phenomenal book on leadership and how you can really just, a a little spark could really just turn things around. It's a great, great book. So I would encourage uh, you guys to pick that up, but it, it wasn't all on Precipio. But most books are. Uh, most leadership books are. There's a lot of great ones out there that are right there on Precipio. Okay, second reminder, Leader Ready. If you have not registered for that, we know you ain't going after Black Friday or during that week. So the time is ticking. We know you're not going to go for the rest of the year. So try to get in before then. Listen, if you get to Leader Ready before then, it is going to help you to drive more sales and help you become a better leader through the really busy times. Some of you are going to be open really, really late. If you're in a mall store, you'll be open till 11, 12 o'clock at night going, you know, uh, <clears throat> going more and more towards the, the holiday, t- towards Christmas. you got to be able to influence and impact your people, right? They ain't going to want to work that late. So you've got to push that along and you've got to be that great coach that makes that happen. Okay, so that's my second reminder. Retire the cliche. Let's talk about one today that I know you probably hear more in your personal life, but it's so ingrained in your head. Figured I'd bring this up, and I want to give Nelson Justinico a lot of credit for this. He sent me this today as a suggestion, and so please, if you have suggestions on retiring the cliche, please send them over to me, or on any topics. Be glad to uh, take those. A couple of my podcasts so far have been on topics that folks have suggested to me that I do, (laughs) but here was one that he did. If you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. Have we heard that one before? I know you have in your personal life, right? And you know what? It's not a bad expression. It's not a bad cliche. It's actually some good advice in some situations. It's probably awful advice when it comes to business. Because if you don't have anything nice to say, what should you say? If you say nothing, what's going to happen? Nothing. So you've got to say something but you can be really nice still and still you know uh coach and and correct behavior in a really good way it doesn't mean you have to yell or or be nasty or anything like that we've talked about a lot of those things in on these podcasts so far and emotional intelligence ties right in with that so in business if you don't have something nice to say you still got to say something How about that? You still got to say something. In your personal life, I think that's fine. You'll know when to say something and when not to. Okay, let's jump into number three. Recap of the first two qualities, characteristics, behaviors that leaders should have to have a high emotional intelligence. Uh, We talked about self-awareness, right? Being aware of how you carry yourself, what you say, some of the things that you do daily. We talked about, you know, you being aware of your body language, of your facial expressions, so many different things that it's important for you to have that self-awareness. Then we talked about self-regulation and you can substitute that for self-control, being able to control yourself, not losing your temper, being able to think before you speak, right? That's really, really important as well. So you can look at last week's to, I went into great detail on both of those Let's jump into the next three. And the next one is motivation. If you're not motivated as a leader, if you don't rush out of bed every single day, really looking to attack the day, you shouldn't be in leadership. 
because here's the thing, leaders that are motivated are typically up early, right? And I know a lot of you work very, very late. So I'm not saying, you know, get up at four or 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., something like that. But here's the thing, great leaders don't sleep in. Great leaders just don't sleep in. Great leaders, you know, something gets them up every single day. And the thing that gets them up is motivation. Every single day is that great motivation to get up and make a difference. If you have motivation, you have a passion for work. You can't wait to get in and, and attack the day. And your people will feed off of that. If you have motivation, you have a sincere and specific desire to raise the bar and get better every single day. Let me say that one more time. If you have motivation, your own self-motivation, you have a desire to raise the bar, get better every single day. And you're going to bring your people along with you. You have that desire for them to get better every single day as well. You see, people that have a high amount of motivation, they're very, very committed. And they always will stretch themselves. They always want to be stretched. And they want to stretch themselves. They want to just do better every single day. Wrapping up motivation, I'll say this. Think about the opposite. Suppose you aren't motivated. Have anyone out there ever worked for a leader that they knew just wasn't motivated for whatever reason? They didn't want to be there. They didn't want to be with the company anymore that, that they were at. They didn't want to be in a particular location, <clears throat> whatever reason. And they, a lot of times personal things can come in play as well. But motivation is so important that you show that every single day. All right, number four is empathy. I love that word. And what does empathy really, really mean? Empathy means that you could really read between the lines. That you can hear what someone is saying and go a little deeper. You have just this great quality to do that. Some people it comes naturally, but remember I said this. I, I'm not sure that I believe that they're natural born leaders. I think that there are some, but I think most of us have, like myself, I'll put myself in that category. you got to work really hard at it. And some people, empathy, I think, comes natural to them. But some people have to be tune themselves to be more intuitive. And so uh, when you can really read between the lines, um, you become very empathetic when you are concerned with what everybody feels. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. It doesn't mean that you're going to try to please everybody. You just can't do that. And again, trust me, I've tried to do that in my career. It doesn't work. It absolutely doesn't work. You can't please everybody. You, at some point, you've got to make a decision. But that doesn't mean that you don't take into consideration how people are feeling. And then it, it helps you to word things a little bit differently. I'll give you an example. I can remember when I had to, I, I made a decision to flip-flop two managers for reasons in both stores, right? I felt like one manager would be a better fit at this store. That manager would be a better fit at the other store. And there were several things that were going on in both stores that made me feel that way. I knew that one manager would be like, Kenny, no problem, I'm going. I knew the other manager would be a little bit disappointed and would question me a lot. So I had to take those feelings into consideration. I made the decision to do it, but I explained it from A to Z. It was probably about a two hour long conversation and it was totally 100% well worth it because that person walked away saying, I get it. I'm not too happy about it, but I'm going to I'm going to go into exploring, right? On that change cycle, we'll do something on change management at some point, but I'm going to I'm going to explore. I'm going to see how it works out because you know what? I do trust Kenny and he really laid it out for me. He didn't just tell me, "Hey, you're going and that's it." Sometimes leaders do that, and that's not a good thing. They don't have that empathy for other people's feelings. So, it doesn't mean that you're trying to please everybody. Um Empathy does this, and this is really important in these days, and I'm so glad we're in the company that talks about this a lot, right? Talks about those cultural differences, diversity and inclusion, so important to you as a leader. And empathy helps you cross those cultural lines. I don't know how else to say that, except that when you practice empathy, you can start to really, really feel where someone else is coming from, even if they're from a total different culture than you're from. And again, in, in our world of embracing diversity and inclusion, which we 100% should 
as great leaders, we should be doing that all the time. This really helps you when you have this quality to, to understand more and ask more questions about where the person is coming from. Because immediately you may not understand culturally where this person is coming from. Empathy really helps you also read body language. So I want to say there is a pitfall to empathy and that's you can sometimes overthink. Reading between the lines can sometimes think, hey, you know, um, did, they, did they mean what they just said? or what? Sometimes people just mean what they said. Sometimes they don't. So you've got to be able to read voice tone, body language, all those things to kind of read between the lines. But the most important thing is to ask questions, right? So if someone said something, hey, did you mean this? No, I didn't mean that. I'm so sorry. Okay, all right, great. Just, just asking. I still know leaders that say this. I don't really care what anybody else thinks. I, I have to say, it's not like I'm friends with leaders like that because probably they don't like to hear exactly what I say when I hear them say that. That's just foolish thinking when you don't care what anybody else thinks. That's leadership from the 80s, from the 70s, even some parts of the 90s. Leaders can't get away with that today. You shouldn't be like that. If you feel that way again, you shouldn't be in leadership. Last thing, and then we will jump to social skills. Empathy, when you are really good at that, it can reduce employee turnover. People are going to want to work for you, and they're not going to want to leave because they're going to say, you know, Kenny gets me. Kenny understands me. He listens when I speak, and he always addresses my needs. Empathy absolutely reduces employee turnover. So if you're struggling with that, ask yourself, hey, am I empathetic enough to my people 100% of the time. We're not going to be perfect, but you want to shoot for that. All right, let's talk about social skills. This is not a long one because here's the thing. If you're shy, that's okay. There's times in my personal life I'm very shy. But don't use that as an excuse to not be social and not interact with your team and with other people. Don't use the excuse, that's just me. It doesn't have to just be you you can definitely step out of that, especially when you're at work. So social skills is not just friendliness, it's friendliness with a purpose, right? And I'm not talking about insincerity there. You wanna genuinely be friendly to folks, but here's the thing, how many times you've been friendly with someone and a year later you need something and you can pick up the phone and you can call them and, and get what you need because you were really friendly towards them. So downtime chatter can be a good thing with a purpose, right? And again, you know, you want to be appropriate, right? You don't want to be inappropriate at your store, but being able to make small talk and find out where people are coming from and find out more about their personal life even a little bit, there's nothing wrong with that. On my team, uh, I'm going to give Mike Clark a lot of credit. He came up with something because we were all new put together, right? He came up with something called Espresso Yourself. So he felt like, hey, we could take an hour online, virtually, have a cup of coffee, and just get to know each other. No business talk. Leaders, you get that opportunity every day. When you're in your store, there's downtime with your people. Just, how was their Halloween this past weekend? What did they do? What are some things that they like? What does what their Halloween pass look like? So friendliness with a purpose. I have a funny expression that I, uh, I, I stole this from an old radio station. And the uh, host used to say this all the time whenever he would be somewhere with p famous people. He said that he would hobnob with the goober smoochers. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. And what he meant was that he was friendly with a purpose because he said, as I would get to know some of these celebrities, I could ask them to come on my show. You know, I could wait a week or so and I would call them. Hey, you remember, you know, this was Scott Shannon. Hey, do you remember when, um, you know, we met last week? Would you would you come on my show with me? And they would always say yes, you know, to him. So he'd have like celebrities on his show and it it, it was phenomenal. So he used to say that and, and translated that just means you're being friendly really with a purpose. Schmoozing with a purpose. Um, you know, you can always cash in later. But here's the thing. Don't let shyness hold you back. If you're shy and you're naturally shy, that's fine. You shouldn't change that. 
but you got to change that a little bit at work. Don't let that be an excuse. You can make conversation. Because if you shy, guess what? The rest of your team's going to be shy. They're going to be shy with customers and they're not going to ask them the right questions to get to that best sale. It all snowballs. All right. That is emotional intelligence, folks. On my podcast here, I'm turning some music on to end. So, uh, you know, self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, social skills. I'm going to end by saying this. Emotional intelligence, when people first started talking about this like 15, you know, maybe even 20 years ago, they used to say it was something that was nice to have. Today, it's a must-have. You have got to be emotionally intelligent to be a successful leader today. I just gave you the way how. Those five things, if you just focus on those five things, whether you're a new leader or veteran leader, I guarantee you things will continue to take off for you. All right, let's wrap it up for now. We'll we'll be back next week with some more. But for now, this is Kenny with the Yak with Mac. We'll talk to you next week.